Greetings, sisters and brothers in Christ. Uh, welcome to our Palm and Passion Sunday worship. Uh, again, I've mentioned this uh, every week, it seems like, but uh, as we gather together, while it is a wonderful thing to be able to do it together and physically be in the same building, in the same space with one another, yet we are still called to be able to church. We are still united, even though we worship all over our communities, all over this area. And so uh, uh, you've hopefully gotten your coats as we gather together and begin this Palm Sunday procession. And so let us begin our worship. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna to the, the Son, Son of David. David. Let us pray. Mercifully assist us, O Lord, God of our salvation, that we may enter with you upon the contemplation of those mighty acts, whereby you have given us life everlasting, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Gospel of Matthew, the 21st chapter. When they had come near Jerusalem and had re reached Bethpage, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet, Jesus, from Nazareth in Galilee the gospel of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. All right, I invite you to take your coats and to raise them up. We're going to wave them at this point. So the Lord be with you. And also with you. And let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and coats and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, uh, we begin this Holy Week on this Palm and Passion Sunday. And I actually always think that whenever we begin on this day, we, we deal with some really interesting things that happen. We hear these two sort of amazing stories, opposites, really, in what, are going to, what is going to happen this week. So on one hand, we have today with the Palm Sunday, with with the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, with the calls of Hosanna, there's this hope, there's all of these wonderful things, the son of David has come. And yet then, by the end of the week, we hear a different story. We hear the story of Jesus alone, crucified. I always think it's interesting even just to think about how this happens, right? At the beginning, we have crowds, we have people tearing down palm branches, taking the coats off their bodies, throwing them down on the ground. The disciples right there as Jesus rides in on this donkey, people are exuberant. And then at the end, we have just this person on a cross that dies for all of us. In some ways, I think it tells the story the way that it needs to, right? It tells the story of what it is that God is willing to do and that in the end, it is God alone who is the one who can save us. God alone who is the one that brings salvation. God alone is the one who is willing to die so that the rest of us might know eternal life. And so, let us continue in this Holy Week. The Passion Story, according to the Gospel of Matthew. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him, one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, 
Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God. And to build it again in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered. He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were world were with Jesus. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, 
He denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, I have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The, the governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His, his blood, blood be on us and on, on our children. children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they, they gathered the whole cohort, cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail! <coughs> they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. 
Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. That is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. And when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man is God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother, mother of James and Joseph, and, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea, named Joseph, who was also a disciple for Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus, then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, there, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that impostor said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command that the tomb be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people, He has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard, soldiers. Go. Make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. The Passion of Our Lord. Thanks be to God.
praying separately in our homes and together in the Spirit, let us pray for the church, the earth, the world, and all who are in need. Come to the church, O saving God. Even when we cannot assemble together, bind your faithful people into one body. Breathe your spirit of life into your church, that we might show your life-giving love to all whom we interact. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come wherever the coronavirus has struck, O compassionate God. Be present to all who mourn their dead, all who have contracted the virus, those who are quarantined or stranded away from home, those who have lost, lost employment, children who cannot assemble for school and parents with needs for child care. Visit physicians, nurses, and home health aides, hospitals and clinics, medical researchers, and the Center for Disease Control. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to the nations and their leaders, O God of peace. Lead the world away from violence. Guide those in authority to provide for those in dire need of humanitarian relief. We pray for our country, the United States, President Trump, and other national, state, and local leaders, that they would be guided by your wisdom, love, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to all in need, O healing God. Unbind all who are held captive by anxiety, despair, or pain. Comfort those around the world who cannot bury their dead. House the homeless in safe places. Show us how to provide some assistance to those who suffer. Accompany those who seek care in overwhelmed hospitals and clinics. Remember those we name here before you, especially Millie, Doyle, Lana, Nancy, Yvonne, Kat, Betty, Evelou, Ruth, Tim, Kathy, Jennifer, and Nicole, and those with chronic ailments including cancer, diabetes, MS, dementia, and Parkinson's. Fill us with compassion and empathy for those who struggle, and keep us faithful in prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, you are our resurrection. We remember all those who have died and trust that, in you, they will live again, especially Floyd. We thank you that we shall one day live with you forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have made us your church, rooted in you and what you can do alone. Help us to give thanks for your saving work and to be a part of that for our neighbors and for the world around us. We pray, Lord, for our church, for the church all around the world, as it begins this holy week, that though we are separated physically, we are still gathered in your one Holy Spirit. We pray especially, O oh God, for our congregation, Triumphant Lutheran, and ask that your presence continue to shine, your spirit move among us, as we grow in Christ to serve others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those whose work puts them in harm's way for the sake of others. We pray for all those in the medical field, for first responders, fire, police, and EMS personnel, for members of the shipping industry that make sure that goods and services reach the places that they need to, and for members of the United States Armed Forces deployed and stationed around the world. And we name especially Michael, Logan, Grant, and Nick. Watch over them and keep them close to you. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. And we pray with joy for all those who have birthdays and anniversaries in this upcoming week. And we pray especially for Stephen, Clara, Natalie, Susan, Sydney, Linda, and Judy. And for Jennifer and Brian, Gail and Charlie, and Ryan and Angela. Bless them in this upcoming year. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And for what else do the people of God pray? And we'll take a few moments of silence so that you may pray in your home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
into your hands, Almighty God. We commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. All right, so now let's take a moment to share the peace with one another. So the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. All right, so let's take a moment to just first off share the peace with those who are around us. So greet all of those. So peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you. And then what I want us to do is uh, kind of what we did last week, right? So take a few moments and just text those who are kind of away. Usually, I mentioned last week, I've noticed that people will greet 10, 15, maybe 45 people, depending on how many uh, you get through. But what I want us to do is to just uh, time five, five people that you can text and just wish them God's peace be with you. So we have some special music. You are welcome to do that now. As well, we will be uh, taking our offering at this time as well, and you can follow the links to be able to, to give your offering to the church. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. And let us continue on with the announcements. Hello, triumphant families. Uh, Deacon Chris here with the announcements for this week. Uh, as you hopefully know, we are beginning Holy Week this week, uh, which is traditionally when we uh, journey to the cross, uh, beginning with today's Palm Sunday and then ending with next Sunday's Easter Sunday. So we are going to have a couple special uh, worship opportunities. You'll get more information about that uh, early this week. And uh, as we celebrate Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Vigil on Saturday, and then Easter on Sunday morning. So we're going to have lots of opportunities this week for us to, uh, to mark this time as a, a holy time uh, in remembrance, even if it is a lot of what we don't traditionally do. Uh, a couple other things coming up. Um, the uh, council this week voted and we will be uh, continuing to not meet in person through Friday, April 17th. Uh, and so any meeting, any of those kinds of things, we will not be meeting. Um, and then we will meet again after Holy Week uh, to make decisions from there on out. Um, and then also uh, be on the lookout this week for an email or some sort of communication. We are finalizing our care groups, um, which is opportunities for us to chat over Zoom, uh, Facebook uh, Messenger, these other kinds of digital platforms where we can talk face-to-face. -face. Um, so we are, uh, hopefully you will be contacted by a facilitator very soon um, for to find a time for you all to chat, to touch base, uh, to spend some time kind of checking in on one another and spending some time together. Again, just trying to find some creative ways for us to, uh, to fight loneliness and isolation in our lives. Uh, those are the announcements for this week. And so now we will go back to our uh, benediction blessing for the services. And now uh, let us hear the benediction blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. No matter where we gather today, uh, the mission remains the same. We grow in Christ to serve others. Thanks be to God. Thanks.